um, in Nature, and there, there have been many, many different reports in Nature and other journals, really describing um, some of the problems with reproducibility. In fact, the National Institutes of Health have both authored some of these, um, the heads of the, the National Institutes have authored some of these reports, and they've also uh, brought, sh shown a light um, on some of the problems, and they're actually addressing some of the problems. So in 2016, they actually have changed their um, reviewer guidelines for all grants that are being submitted in 2016. And they broke this down into several different places where they think we really need to pay a little bit more attention. Um, so statistical challenges are certainly one of the places where people need to pay a lot more attention. And there are efforts trying to address some of that. Um, another, another portion of the, the total problem uh, comes down to something called key biological resources. And these key biological resources that uh, the National Institutes of Health are actually calling out specifically by name are, this will be familiar, antibodies, cell lines, um, other chemical reagents, and um, uh, antibody cell lines and uh, transgenic organisms, I'm sorry, so organisms, cell lines, and um, and antibodies. So these are things that we actually need our IDs for. These are, these are places where we need to first be able to identify those particular organisms and cell lines and antibodies. And then the second thing we absolutely need to do is we need to sit down and really say, okay, how do I know that I actually am using this reagent correctly? How do I know that my cell line is not contaminated at the source? because as we know, many of these cell lines that are in common use have drifted over the years and they've become something else. So there are committees of, of research scientists that are looking at these issues, but the problem is they're working over here in one spot, somebody else is working over here, they don't always know about each other. So one of the beautiful things about identifiers, which if we can at least identify, that's a big part of the problem, right? But once you have an identifier, one of the beautiful things you can do is you can actually bring in additional information, additional data to that particular research object. So for example, I have a cell line from a particular biocenter that is known to be contaminated. That report exists in an Excel file over in Australia. But when you have an identifier, that report can be brought into that particular research object. So now when a researcher goes in, they try to find their RRID. What they'll see is, hey, this cell line is contaminated. I should rethink what my study says about it. Should I do an additional bit of an experiment? Should I rewrite my conclusions? It might affect this, right? Maybe the contamination effect doesn't change my study in any way, but maybe it does. I might need to think about that again. So um, this should be a tool for authors, and it's a tool to bring in additional pieces of information into the study before it's published, before the researcher puts his or her reputation on the line. This should be a piece of information that they should know. RRIDs can also help in identifying mislabeled cells or um, questionable lab supplies. Absolutely. And that's how they can help in mm -hmm. producing uh, issues when someone else has to produce or reproduce the science. Right. So on the one hand, they just identify, they answer the simple question of which uh, resources were used in this study. They answer another question when enough people use them, which is who else used this particular resource. But when you start getting back information about you know, how the RRIDs are actually functioning and when they actually get enough data around them, like the cell lines, then what they will actually also answer is, okay, so this one is bad, right? It's known to be bad. It's known to be contaminated. There are these little pieces of information that can be kind of attached to, um, to these individual um, cell lines or antibodies. And when enough of those pieces of information get attached, or if it's by a particular authority, 
then you know that you should probably trust that. And then you should act accordingly, um, you know, comp- and, and relook at whatever piece of uh, evidence that you're actually basing on that reagent working in a proper way. 